Biology. So let's now look at the liver diseases. So there are different liver diseases which may affect the liver one way or the other. So the first liver disease, let's look at liver cirrhosis. As you can look, this is the diagram of liver cirrhosis. So we have a healthy liver and then we have a cirrhotic liver. So if liver is affected, that's how it will look like. The major cause of liver cirrhosis, it may be caused by different chemicals, but mostly out here is caused by alcohol. So it can also be caused by a virus, by a bacterium, and alcoholic drinks, it can be caused by different chemicals, including the intake of heavy metals uh, in the environment. So mostly uh, you should avoid so much eating fried meat. Because in fried meat, let's say for example, we are having nyamachoma. So for the nyamachoma, remember nyamachoma is healthy, but now the firewood which is, which is being used to cook this nyamachoma or the charcoal which is being used to cook this nyamachoma, for example, remember you don't know where this, it grew from, uh, where the tree grew from so that it makes the firewood so that this firewood to be used to uh, dry fry the nyamachoma. So what happened is that if this, if this tree grew in an area whereby there were heavy metals, so automatically it will mean that this tree absorbed the heavy metal. So if this tree makes the charcoal, then the charcoal is used to fry the nyama choma. So it will mean that this nyama choma that you'll be eating, that smoke that was coming from that was coming from the charcoal or the firewood, that smoke will be having heavy metals. So that is a, a way by which people consume heavy metals and they don't even realize that they consumed heavy metals. That is also a way by which Cancer is much rampant these days because most of the people intake these heavy metals. They don't know how they intake, uh, they took the heavy metals. Nyamachoma is one way by which heavy metals can be ingested in the body, which might be fatal. So for this liver cirrhosis, apart from being brought by excess intake of, of alcohol, it can also be brought by excess intake of chemicals and as well excess intake of the heavy metals in the surrounding. For the Nyamachoma case and the trees, that is a one method by which people may take heavy metals without even realizing that they are taking heavy metals. So for this liver cirrhosis, we see that this is basically a disease of the liver which leads to the hardening of the liver tissue. So if the liver tissue become hardened, so this will mean that the liver will not serve its function appropriately as it is desired. So it leads to the hardening of the liver tissue due to chemicals or due to the burning of the liver cells. So what are now the symptoms of this disorder which is liver cirrhosis? So the first symptom of liver cirrhosis is general body weakness. Apart from general body weakness we have weight loss and after weight loss we have indigestion and stomach upset because remember the function of the liver is to produce bile juice. So bile juice is not being produced adequately. So this is going to lead to indigestion and stomach upset. Apart from that, there's also loss of appetite and pain in the upper side of the abdomen. So there's going to be pain, like for this picture. So there's going to be pain in the upper side of the abdomen. So this pain in the upper side of the abdomen points towards a failure or points towards a defective liver. Because in the, that upper side of the abdomen, that is the location of the liver. So that pain in the abdomen shows that there is a problem uh, the liver is facing that must be addressed immediately. So apart from that, so the other symptom of liver is that uh, it may lead to nausea and vomiting. That is the other symptom of liver cirrhosis. It may lead to nausea and vomiting. Apart from that, it may lead to very serious cases of liver cirrhosis may lead to liver failure. Liver failure may be fatal. So this may be fatal, it may be fatal liver failure. So that's another symptom. Uh, it may lead to fatality. Also apart from that, uh, this disorder may also lead to a condition which is referred to as jaundice. Some people call it jaundice, some people call it jaundice. But as long as you have the spelling right, you are good to go. So it may lead to a condition which is referred to as jaundice. And as you can see, this diagram or this picture, so this is a picture of this young, uh, young, young person, so young human being. Who has that condition so take note on this side he's normal on the other side there's a disorder so jaundice is a condition whereby the skin pigmentation changes color to yellow 
Why does the, pig, uh, does the skin pigmentation change color to yellow? So the skin pigmentation will change color to yellow to indicate that there is a high degree of protein in the blood. So if there is a high degree of protein in the blood, the skin pigmentation, including the eyes, they are going to change color to yellow. Like for example, you can see a person who has jaundice, how their eyes look like. So that is exactly. So the skin pigmentation will change yellow. The eyes of these people also affected is going to change color to yellow. So what are the treatments and control of liver cyhosis? Obvious. The first treatment and control, remember, early diagnosis to detect and eliminate the problem. That is the first one. So early diagnosis to detect and eliminate the problem, that's the first one. After that, avoid excess intake of alcohol as well as avoid excess intake of proteins and excess intake of salt of salty food so avoid excess intake of fats of protein and of salt this will help you apart from that eat a balanced diet don't eat too much protein too much carbohydrates vitamins so eat a balanced diet apart from that if you are not a person who likes regular exercising make sure that you have undertaken regular exercising habits in order to burn the excess fats that might be that might be on your body so make sure to undertake regular exercise maybe if it's walking about two kilometers per day walking about three kilometers a day cycling running doing this and that playing football sports so make sure you have engaged in regular exercising habits in order to burn the excess fat in the body so after that, the next disease of the liver, we have nephritis. So nephritis is the next, uh, not nephritis, sorry. We have hepatitis. So the next disease is hepatitis. So for this hepatitis, we see that uh, hepatitis is basically caused by a virus. So this is caused by a virus. It is a viral infection, hepatitis, whereby we have different types of hepatitis. At least we have five types of hepatitis. We have hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. So we have five hepatitis, whereby hepatitis A and B is the most common. Those are the mo two most common types of hepatitis. Whereby we see that hepatitis A is most common in children and young adults, whereby hepatitis B is mostly common in adults. So remember that the two most common is hepatitis A and B whereby hepatitis A is mostly common in children and in young adults. Hepatitis B is mostly common in adults, basically adults. Hepatitis B is basically common in adults. And for the hepatitis B, this hepatitis B is considered as an STI, sexually transmitted infection, because we'll see that it doesn't have any cure. So it is considered as a sexually transmitted infection. So let's look at the general characteristics, uh, the general symptoms of this hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. So what are the general characteristics? So the first one is fatigue and weakness. That's the first one in all hepatitis. There's jaundice and nausea. After that, there's poor appetite. Uh, yeah, there's poor appetite. After that, there's fever. So these people having hepatitis, they develop sensation of fever. There's pain in abdomen. There's pain in joints also. And also, if they urinate, they produce a dark urine. They don't produce a colorless urine, a yellowish urine. They produce a dark urine. So picture a color like maroon or picture a color like, a color like what? Basically maroon, maroon or brownish color. So when they produce urine, they produce urine that is a dark urine. Okay, we'll see the dark urine. And then for the stool, they produce a light colored stool. So their stool is not the, the normal color that you know. It's a light colored stool like for the ones for the chicken, the, which the hens produce. They produce a stool which looks like that. White colored or light colored stool. So these are the general characteristics of all the hepatitis. So let's begin with the first one, which is hepatitis A. So for the hepatitis A, we see that this is mostly common in children and in young, young adults. And it is caused by hepatitis A virus. All the hepatitis are caused by hepatitis this virus, hepatitis this virus, hepatitis that virus. So hepatitis A, it is caused by hepatitis A virus. So this disease is mainly transmitted through contact with contaminated water, contaminated food, 
contaminated feces or mm, sharing or not sharing being in contact with fluid of an infected person so if you are in contact with the fluid of an infected person you'll also get this disorder which is hepatitis a so also we see that this disorder can also be passed through breastfeeding from an infected mother to a healthy baby yeah to a healthy baby so they can also be able to get this disease through breastfeeding so the symptoms of this disease they begin to appear after two to about three weeks of infection so between two to three weeks of infection the symptoms of hepatitis a begins to appear so that the symptoms of hepatitis a so the first symptom of hepatitis a is lack of appetite so these people do not have appetite by the way what i want you to realize is that these symptoms between hepatitis A and hepatitis B, we are going to recycle like 97% of the symptoms. So if you know symptoms of hepatitis A, you are good to go with symptoms of hepatitis B. So the first one is lack of appetite. The next one is these people produce dark colored urine. So you see, this is the normal urine, how the normal urine should look like. But the people having hepatitis A, hepatitis B, they'll produce the dark colored urine. So you see, the dark colored urine, that is the dark color urine that we mean. So they are going to produce that type of urine. Apart from that, they have light colored stool. Stool which, is, which may assume a white color or a bright yellow color. After that, these people, uh, they are easily fatigued and they have body weaknesses. And apart from that, nausea and vomiting. So the same characteristic we are going to recycle to the next hepatitis. So that the treatments and control of hepatitis A. So the first one, early diagnosis to detect the problem. Apart from that, uh, proper disposal of sewage. Uh, yeah, we can say proper disposal of sewage and stool. So after that, take plenty of fluids. So these people having hepatitis A, they are advised to take plenty of fluids, i.e. water. So after that, avoid eating fatty foods and also avoid intake of alcohol. I guess by now we have mentioned very many negative effects of alcohol. So if you can be able to avoid alcohol at all costs, so avoid alcohol. Be it excess, be it little, be it tot. Avoid alcohol. So after that, good physical hygiene. So hygiene is a key, uh, like when it comes to kidney diseases and also liver diseases. Good physical hygiene. Kuam safi. Everywhere. Uh, from inside, from outside, be clean. So good physical hygiene. So after that, always treat drinking water. So yeah, always treat drinking water. Don't just buy water anywhere and start drinking that water. That water might have very many infections. So always treat drinking water, treat or boil drinking water before consumption. So that was hepatitis A. Fast forward, let's now go to hepatitis B and look at hepatitis B. So for the hepatitis B, we see that this disease is mainly considered a sexually transmitted disease or an STD or an STI. This is uh, the hepatitis B. So it is mainly considered a sexually transmitted disease and therefore we see that this disease doesn't have a cure. So hepatitis A can be able to be cured and eliminated. Hepatitis B cannot be cured, so it doesn't have a cure. Hepatitis B also, we see that it is mostly common in adults, unlike children. It is mostly common in adults. So being common in adults, we see that it can also be transmitted through semen. It can also be transmitted through vaginal fluid. It can also be transmitted through blood. It can also be transmitted through sweat. It can also be transmitted through saliva. It can also be transmitted through mucus. So, hepatitis B... Being a sexually transmitted disease, it can be transmitted through any body fluid, just like HIV. So it can be transmitted through any body fluid. So it is mostly spread through mm, sharing of sharp objects. So sharing of sharp objects or piercing objects by the users, it can lead to this hepatitis. So apart from body fluids, it can also be spread through sharing of sharp objects because it is mostly found in body fluids. So this disease is mostly, uh, is mainly, the disease is mainly caused by hepatitis B virus, which is HBV. So it is mainly caused by hepatitis B virus. Remember hepatitis A, we say that it is caused by hepatitis A virus. Hepatitis B, it is caused by hepatitis B 
virus. So the symptoms of this disease appear between three to four months after infection. So between three to four months after infection, that is when now hepatitis B begins to appear. So remember in hepatitis A we said about two to three weeks it begins. But this one, uh, between four, between three to four months after infection, so the symptoms of hepatitis B will start to appear immediately uh, to the person. So we know that this disease doesn't have any cure and then this disease is more serious than hepatitis A. It is much serious than hepatitis A. Hepatitis A has mild symptoms. The symptoms will go away after treatment. But hepatitis B, this disease is more serious than hepatitis A. So what are the symptoms of hepatitis B? Remember, we are just recycling the points of hepatitis, uh, the symptoms of hepatitis A. Just that now in, in hepatitis B, the symptoms are more severe. So we, the first symptom is lack of appetite or loss of appetite. So here the loss of appetite is more severe than hepatitis A. So this loss of appetite, also this dark colored urine as you can see. So we have, uh, these people have dark colored urine. Apart from that, they have light colored stool. Apart from light colored stool, there's fatigue and body weakness. After fatigue and body weakness, there's nausea and vomiting. By the way, as you can look at this, these two pictures, so these people have rashes on their bodies. So the person having hepatitis B, they have rashes on their body, as you can see. So for these rashes of the body, this is the back, the back of the person. Those are the legs of the person. So they have rashes on the body. So this is also another symptom of hepatitis B. There is skin rashes all over the body. So it's not only the back, it's not only the legs. All over the body, including the face, it looks like that. That is, how, uh, that is also another symptom of hepatitis B. Apart from that, any disease of the liver leads to jaundice. You just know that yellow coloration of the skin. So any disease of the liver leads to jaundice. Most of them, let's just say most of them. So the other symptom is jaundice, whereby the person will, the skin pigmentation will look yellow in color. Then they have joint pains and then there's nausea and vomiting. So that the treatments and control of hepatitis B. So the first treatment and control early diagnosis to detect and eliminate the problem. If this hepatitis B is detected early, it can the virus can be able to be suppressed and it won't be it won't be more severe. And as well, it can be able to be eliminated completely from the body. So early diagnosis is very important. So apart from early diagnosis, just like all sexually transmitted diseases avoid immorality that is another treatment and control so avoid immorality because you will never know that this person has sti you'll never know that this person has sti because these days the people who have sti they even look normal more normal than a normal person should look like why because their skin is soft because of the drugs they use for example arv arv makes the skin to be soft and also arv makes the person to look healthy uh, the body looks very healthy. They are not thin. Remember these people having HIV? Uh, previously, they were very thin. But these days, if you take ARV, in fact, you are going to grow in mass. So these people, you never know who has the STI. So the main thing here is avoid immorality. After that, the next one is avoid sharing sharp objects with anyone, be it a healthy person, be it a sick person. Avoid sharing sharp objects. Apart from that, Proper sewage disposal. Apart from proper sewage disposal, <coughs> good personal hygiene. So just observe good personal hygiene and you'll be good to go. So apart from that, screen blood before transfusion. So if you want to undertake blood transfusion, completely screen the blood to make sure there are no pathogens in the blood, there are no diseases in the blood, there are no this and that in the blood before transfusion. So completely screen blood before transfusion. So after that, vaccination so vaccinate uh, the people against hepatitis b virus as well as treat uh, treatment of water so treat water before drinking that water treat or completely boil water before consuming the water biology